Hi guys, thank you for joining me. Here we got the live webcam looking at the sawmill complex. Yeah, it looks like uh, some of the geysers are a little more active. And of late, yeah, more trees have died off. Someone was supposed to send me images of their recent visit a week or so ago to the park. And they said there was a tremendous amount of trees that had recently died, they thought. Uh, and it looked like they had died from the roots going up. So here's what's going on with Yellowstone today. 42 earthquakes within the last week. They did a whole bunch of mine blasting, which is really dumb, um, towards the west of the caldera. That, along with the fracking that they do towards the uh, southeast of the park, yeah, absolutely insane. So we have a minus 0 0.1 up there by Hebden Lake, uh, 7 kilometers in depth. Now that's outside of the caldera rim. Also a 0 0.9. Let me zoom into that location for you. Up there by Fishing Bridge. Real shallow, 1.7 kilometers in depth. So that's about one mile in depth, real shallow. And they have a recently discovered fault zone up there. But it wasn't a 0 0.9. Here we have Lake Butte. And it came in as a magnitude 1.46. There's the spectrogram. In the center is Little West Thumb. There's its spectrogram. And on the left is Borehole from the Norris Geyser uh, Basin Area. Borehole 950. I had to change some of the monitors because a lot of the data has been not coming in correctly. A lot of you have been asking about uplift at the park. And after Michael Pollan's poorly presented uh, video about the uplift that he claims is not happening, I'll give you a link to this page. And depending on what site you want to go to, um, it'll show you either deformation or uplift. Of course, the uplift's going on where the earthquakes are occurring. First monitor I'm going to show you is up over here by Yellowstone Lake. And you have to take notice of east. They're measuring east and north, not south and west. But if we come down here, and this was taken last date of August 4th, you'll see we got uplift in this location. Uh, sometime after 2016. I don't think, well, can I make that bigger? Let's try. And I can. And it shows uplift. And down here is the year. And was last plotted on August 4th of this year. The next site I'm going to show you is kind of down by Grant. There at Little West Thumb. I'll bring it in so you can see. So you can see even east has risen. It's slightly going down. North is going down. They're not measuring or don't have on here. They don't have uh, west or south. But we got uplift. and But it is going down a little bit there. And I'll make that larger. Yeah, it took a jump between 2012 and 2014. And this is what it's currently showing. And again, this is from August Fourth, it was plotted. The next one I'm going to show you is, oh, south. The next one I'm going to show you is northwest of Yellowstone Lake. So basically, we got to ignore this. This is east and north, not south and west. And we'll click on this. So we let me pull this up. 2006, and I got to be fair and correct. And that's what it's currently showing as of recently, August 4th. It was plotted. You can see it's rising up again, almost as high as it was as back in 2006. Next one I'm going to show you, I believe, is the Norris Geyser Basin area. All right. Oh, Gibson, Gibson, Gibson Falls, or Gibbon Falls, excuse me. I recently shared on Twitter a video from that area and all the dead trees. 
Yeah, very sad. Only sporadically have they been taking data. You can see that there. It goes back to 2010, and I'll bring it over. 2016, it took a jump. And this is what it's currently showing. Yep, it's rising. And this was as of August 4th. So it's actually higher right now than it's ever been in the past. You can see it took a jump. It took a breath. I've talked about that in the past. How these earthquakes often make the ground pop up and then it drops down. But there you can see. Let me go back and I'll pull it over for you. And let's bring it down. So I thought I would go up and check out the area where they have the roads closed. Here we have Canyon Village. And Roosevelt Tower is up over here. Okay, there's Yellowstone Lake at the bottom. This is the next monitor I'm going to show you. So we have east and west, but not north or south. And taking data sporadically. And you can see how it has been going up and down. And they got a plot showing it's currently going up. Not as high as it's been in the past. And there's the date. And the date that it took a jump, again, 2016. And it goes back to 2010. Let me pull this up for you. Now we know the caldera, the hot spot, is slowly moving uh, northeast. So I thought, well, we'll check out the border between Montana and Wyoming. There's a location. Let me bring it out for you. And bring it down. And there, down at the bottom, is Yellowstone Lake. Again, east and west shows it's going down. But if we go to the overall plot for everything, let's make that bigger. You can see they've been plotting, and it's slowly going up. So because it takes a breath, they have their plot line along over here. Let me bring it up for you. And this is the most recent. For some reason, they got it marked in pink. This is from August 4th. And I'll bring it over. So if you look at the plot line, you can see it's rising up. And it's even higher than it was back in 2004 and 2000. That's when they started plotting this. Let me bring this down for you. Well, you always could take data from outside of the caldera and see what's going on there. Yeah, if you want to fudge with the data. Surprisingly, where the uh, magma comes in under the ground over by Hedge and Lake. I don't know if it's this one. Yeah, that one right there. It's showing up left. Let me show you that. There we go. And we'll click on this to make it larger. This goes back to 2006. Do, 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 do. And we'll come up. And we'll come back over. I wanted to show you the tilt data for other monitors, but they got the micro radians set so high you can't see what's going on. This is borehole 950. And this is set at 2 micro radians. But at least at 2 micro radians, it shows you the uh, uplift that's going on basically, mostly in the middle. But we got it spread out in other locations. So this is the last week. And then we'll come down to the last 30 days. See that? How they got that set? And see here, I'm talking about where it took a breath. See how it took a breath there around the 29th? And just before the uh, 22nd. Here we have the tilt meter for Panther, borehole 945. And we'll come down to the last week. Yeah, I hate it when they got that set. Now this is set at 5 microradians so they could track um, the uplift in a wider area. But yeah, and then the last 30 days. I hate that when they do that. Top is north, X is north, and Y is east. So it's risen in the north. And that's where this location is, right along the 
Montana border. Look at where we got a whole bunch of data missing. Yellowstone Lake. X is north. Y is east. Let me try and line up this little line for you. Let me come down. You can see how it's rising. Last seven days. Okay. And they're tracking the magma that flows under the ground. That's what this little triangle is for. X is north, Y is east, in which direction. And of course, it's going across the lake to Lake Butte and the Promontory. And I've talked about that and the crack. And then the last 30 days, let's line that little line up with the top so you can see that it is, in fact, rising. See that? All right, then we'll come down here. Wide area. And this is set at 10. 10 microradians. Yeah, Madison River area, Maple Creek area. This is the monitor I was using that was showing um, all that heat coming up. Top is north, bottom is east. Last seven days. And look at all the dots spread out. Yeah, over a very large area. And this is set at two microradians. And we'll come down to the last 30 days. Let's see if we can line up. Yeah, we got uplift, don't we? In the last week, you can barely tell. But see how they got the numbers? So it's hard to see what's going on. And look at the jump that it took on the 29th. And recently. And then look at this. Yeah, all the little dots out. Yeah, there's probably more. That one's right on the edge of the disk. That's set at two microradians. And I've talked about this one in past videos, how it was changing directions. And now it's, well, it's spreading out under the ground because of that cap of rhyolite is holding it under the ground. And it's kind of like oozing underneath a sheet of glass in different directions. So they have a 0 0.3 there in the middle of the lake. 8.8 um, .8 kilometers in depth at 8.49 Universal Time. So there's the spectrogram. Borehole 950 on the left. Little West Thumb on the middle there. And Lake Butte in the center. Let's look at the signature. It's got a bit of a P wave on it. That's interesting. Possibly two earthquakes, bam, bam, one right after the other. But with shortening the seismic wave, it comes in as a 0 0.94. I really shouldn't have shortened it that much. If I made it longer, it actually would be a 1.13. At 252 and 252 and 30 seconds, we had more popping of the rock. And you can see the uh, melt, how it's rising up. And I'll show you. See that? Pop. Extreme uh, fracturing. Brittle ground there. Now again, this is Lake Butte. The borehole um, there at Norris Junction only picked up a very slight popping right there. You can see it there. And I lined it up so you can match it up with the other one. See that? And then this one here. Yeah, it showed up, but barely. And we got um, the borehole. Little West Thumb in the center. Lake Butte on the right. We'll look at the spectrogram. And, the, and then let's go back to the screaming. Now that has settled down, but it's still doing it. Not as much, but it has settled down. So I want to go to the screaming. It doesn't seem to be screaming right now. I don't hear any, or see any indications where it came in so hard and fast that it went quiet. Let me go to a little west thumb. Let's make that bigger. See what the activity was was doing. We got several marked in red here that, of course, USGS isn't reporting. Another one marked. See, there was a peak there, but it was able to record it. Yeah. Yeah, the hot magma came up. Uh, let's see what else we got here. There's another one there at uh, 252. Let me take a look at this signature. Just kind of jump around here a little bit. 
And blobs of magma. And look at the melt. I've talked about how these are pockets of melt. Not all rock melts at the same temperature. And we'll come down because this is what it was doing when I pulled the files. We just come across here a little bit. And then we got another one right there. And let's see if I can close that out. Is that right there? Yeah, that's right there. Look at the signature. Yeah, harmonic and volcanic tremors. Yeah. Here we got Lake Butte. This one's marked in red. Look at the heat. We got some little ones here. That's marked in red. Yeah, look how high the melt is getting there at Lake Butte. And how, how, you know, I really like the monitors where they have it cut off on the side and it shows the depth. USGS doesn't do that. No, no. Got another one marked in red there and a whole bunch here. Yeah, lots of them. That one I did. Here's another one. Look at the gases that came up. Let's look at the signature. More popping of the rock. And another one there. I think I did that one. Yeah, I did that one. All right, that one's marked in red just after midnight universal time. This is borehole 950. They're not reporting that. And this is what I was showing when I pulled the files. Yeah, drum beats. Yeah, let's look at the signature. Look at that. I'll pull it over. Volcanic tremors coming from a borehole. This is not outside noise because it's a very deep well. Oh, 500 feet under the ground. Yeah, we got a little shaker there. Yeah. Let me close that so we can look up here. Yeah. Let's come down. Volcanic tremors coming from a borehole. I really liked what Maple Creek was showing me. I tried to uh, to get Madison River. Oh my goodness, they got it cranked so high. Um, you can't read anything from that monitor. Yeah, the higher the microvolts, the smaller it makes the data look. There is absolutely no reason to cheat to keep changing the data on the microvolts. No reason whatsoever. Here's another example of volcanic tremor. I'm looking for something that I just seen that, yeah, there's another one. I want to show you this again, which was a real interesting signature. See, when you're seeing signatures like this coming from a borehole, a very deep well under the ground, yeah, and they're not talking about it. I'm going to give you a link to this page because it shows um, volcanic tremors prior to an eruption. This one here is Kilauea um, from 1960, I believe. This is a really good article. Yeah, see the signature over here about um, volcanic and explosive earthquakes. Oh, there we go. It went quiet went quiet here at the borehole. I didn't see that until just now at 4.59 and 55 seconds. Let's take a look at that. I did not see that. And that's really significant coming from a borehole. That is definitely a wow moment across the board. Borehole 950 Lake Butte and Little West Thumb. Let's look at the signature here. There was an earthquake afterwards. That is a wow moment. Because I found it so late in making this video. I mean, it's currently 12.05 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I'm going to put it on Twitter because it's going to be at the end of this video. But that's not the signature I was looking for. Uh, here's Little West Thumb. We got harmonic tremors, screw wave, another screw wave. 
there throughout this. Yeah, I'm still trying to find it. Yeah, some reason the program here cleared itself out. Well, I can't find it. Everything happens for a reason. That's what I believe. And this is what the borehole was showing when I pulled in the files. Yeah, the line of melt. Oh, look at the signature, all the drum beats. Maybe it was in here somewhere that I had that signature, which was really odd. I can't find it now. But like I said, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, look at that. Anyways, what are your thoughts? Please put those comments down below. Yeah, and look at the line of dead trees over here. I've been following this for a couple of years. How much wider it's getting. Yeah. Yeah, they've turned bone white, haven't they? Yeah. So, always be prepared for a disaster. Um, yeah, stock up on that food and water. If Yellowstone does decide to have a major eruption, it would affect crops. It would drop the uh, global temperature by about at least 5 degrees. And, uh, yeah, it would affect our electricity. It would affect, um, yeah, just about everything, our entire way of life. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.